Hi, this is a brief introduction to the Wikitree Sourcer browser extension, which I developed. I'm just going to show a couple of slides and then uh, I'll get into a demo. So what is Wikitree Sourcer? It's, so it's a browser extension, which means within your browser like Chrome or um, Firefox, you can uh, use it to save you time. Uh, it works in most browsers, but unfortunately not in Safari uh, and not on the iPad, even in Chrome, as Apple doesn't support extensions in those yet. Uh, it's focused on three main goals. Uh, you can search from your Wikitree profile to find sources. Once you've found a source, you can build citations from the record pages. And then also from those record pages, you could search record pages on different sites so from you could search from ancestry to family search for example so let's take a look at a profile this is one of my profiles and uh, I've removed all the sources from it just uh, as a test to be able to demo it so where's the browser extension you wonder so up here in the uh, toolbar you can see these are these three things are all icons for browser extensions, and the uh, one the one in square brackets is the Wikitree Sourcer icon. If for some reason you can't find it, um, it can be hard to see if you're in the dark mode, you know, with a dark background in uh, Chrome. This is Chrome. Uh, also, if for some reason it's not showing up, it should by default. You can look under all the extensions here, and there's this little pin here. And you can see if I toggle this on and off up here, this icon goes away and comes back. So make sure that is pinned if for some reason it isn't by default. So, what does that icon do? It brings up a menu and allows you to search these four other sites. Currently, these are the ones that are implemented, more will be added. Um, and there are some other menus we'll get to later. So in this case, uh, we can see Blanche was born in 1867, so there should be a civil birth registration. So we're gonna search the GRO for a birth. So it opens a new tab, goes to the GRO birth indices, and it automatically fills out all the information that we have, including the mother's maiden name, and we just press the search button. And you can see there's only one match, which is our person. Uh, so we want to build a citation of this. If there was more than one match, uh, it would default to using the first one. But if you didn't want the first one, you can use the toggle like that uh, to make sure it, it does a citation for the one you want. So under the menu, so you can see this same icon is here on this page also, and there's a build citation. So we do that and it says it's been built and copied to the clipboard and also saved internally. So let's go back to, so we want to add a citation here. Let's go to edit mode and we could just use paste uh, like Control V or paste from the clipboard here, like paste like that, but you can also do insert inline citation here. And if we do that, you can see it's put in a inline citation. You can preview it and see there's this, this inline citation on the birth line, and here it shows up under sources. There's a lot of options that control how this shows up. Like if you don't like this but emboldened little title at the beginning, you can get rid of that. Uh, you can control how these links are uh, formatted. Uh, let's have a look at that now. So under options, you can see this uh, on the menu, there's an options thing, it opens a new tab. So these are currently all the options. There'll probably be a lot more. So we've just created a citation for the GRO. So these are the options that control that. Um, it's, uh, it's automatic by default. It's changed all the names to be 
uh, lowercase. If you look on the GRO in this, these are all uppercase, uh, but you don't necessarily want that in your citation, so by default it changes them. You, you can turn that off. Um, it as it puts the GRO citation in italics here. This you can see that's in italics. You can decide you want that or don't want that. Um, there's the you have a few choices here. Um, if you wanted to look more like the England uh, Orphan Trail citation templates, you could say you don't you want to actually have a visible URL and just to the content site. But by default, it creates a hyperlink with the full search parameters. So what that means is, let's go back to here. If I hover over it, you can see that it actually fills out in the URL all the uh, details in order to find that record again. So if I open that in a new tab, you can see it doesn't just go to the GRO content site, it actually goes to the births and fills out all the fields so that if you, you know, including the volume, the page, so that you can find that record again just to, you know, if you you thought it was an incorrect citation and you were checking it. Okay, so uh, one last thing on the thing. Uh, yeah, this last option here, add a link to the registration district. This is also optional, but people, some people find it useful. You can see here the district is actually a hyperlink. If I open that in a new tab up here, you can see it opens the free BMD site and um, will tell you information about what's, where St Pancras is, you know, what county it's in, the history of when it was created and abolished. So that's the last option here. So if I wanted to, for example, change a whole bunch of those things. Uh, so I don't want the registration district, and I want a visible URL. You change those, do save. This is the where we created our citation from. Build a new citation. Uh, let's leave the old one there just for comparison. Paste this one. I did control V that time rather than uh, using the menu. And you can see we've got two different citations. Let's see this new one, you just puts in the URL to the GRO content and there's no district URL. If I follow this link here, you can see that just takes you here. It's not, not as useful, but it's a much shorter link. So I'm gonna go back and put those back to how I like them. Save them and Let's regenerate the citation just because I want to show you another feature. Uh, we'll go back, delete that second citation, which we didn't like. And the other feature is you might, uh, let's preview just to, so it's up to date. You might not like a uh, inline citation. Some uh, They are the preferred thing on Wikitree, but some people prefer to just insert sources. So. Let's get rid of that. So if you want just a source, you just put your cursor down here and then bring up the menu and you can see instead of saying insert inline citation, it says insert citation as source. And here we go. So now you can see it's inserted as a source, not an inline citation. Um, there are a few limitations on that, like. You, some citations have tables in, you can't put those on the in a bulleted list, but I'll get to that. So that's inserting a GRO citation. Um, let's try adding, say, I saw the 1881 census record. I'm going to try searching for that on Ancestry. Now you may have noticed Previous time I used the menu to a search, I was on the the uh, read menu. Let's go back to there. So I was doing it from this menu, but you can actually do it in either the public view, the private view, or in the edit view. You can do use this menu. 
So let's search Ancestry. Um, by default, if you use this, there are two different ways you can search, but if you use this one, it will just search Ancestry for all the information that we have about uh, Blanche Amelia Chaplin, including her parents, her spouse, and so on. And it finds a whole bunch of information, including the 1881 census. Uh, Let's try closing that tab again and go back to the profile. So if we were specifically looking for the 1881 census, we could click here and it will depend based on the country that the profile is from and the date range, birth and death ranges, it will show you the likely collections. And you can search the 1881 census and now it's going to go to Ancestry and search specifically within that collection. And you can see it comes up with the 1881 record for Blanche. Let's create a citation. Let's go back and here we have a, an entry about the 1881, where she was in 1881. Let's paste that in, do a preview and check it out. So we can see it cites the 1881 England census, gives you the uh, reference details, and it gives you two links, the Anthropy Sharing link, which is one that anyone can view, and the record link, which if you have an Anthropy subscription, you can view and get more information. Now this Anthropy Sharing link, um, you're probably familiar with those. If I click on it, open in another tab, it's a, a free sharing link that anyone can view. Now normally, I go back to the sense the record we created the citation from. Normally to create that link, you'd have to click on the image. You'd have to go to this sharing thing. You'd say, I want to share it to Twitter, even though you don't really want to share it to Twitter. You'd have to cancel this so I don't really want to show, and then you'd see so you get this free link, and you'd go back here. You'd say, okay, I want to put a free link in here. Say here, and then you'd say, I don't really need all of this UTM campaign bandito stuff, and it would look like that. But what you really want is the template because that's the preferred way to do it. So you'd have to type this in and put these numbers in. But as you can see, Wikidree Sourcer did all of that automatically when you did build citation. Um, also, you can see it's created a text string here telling you a bit about the, the what's in the source. Now that's optional. You can, um, in the, if we go back to the options, for Ancestry, there's only one option currently. You can say the record data at the end of the citation there. You can either say don't have any, have a text string, or have a table. Uh, if we go back, get rid of that, go back to where we were. Let's build a citation. Let's check I saved that. Um, build citation. And back to here for comparison. I'll put them next to each other. You can see, so you have a choice between this text string or the table. The table gives you a bit more information, like it'll give you everything that's shown on the, the ancestry record, um, and including all the ages of all the household members. The text string is just something I build that is a shorter summary of that. Uh, so it's up to you which you want to use. So next is, yeah, so the, other, the third feature, third goal of the tool is to be able to search from one record to another. So say I wanted to use, cite the family search 1881 census. I've already found it on Ancestry. It's kind of easier to find things on Ancestry because the search is a bit better, but say I want to find this record on FamilySearch. 
So I could just do a general family search search, which will just take all the information from this page and just search all of all of uh, family search. But I can also say search for the same collection on family search. As is, so this is specifically searching only the 1881 census on family search. And you can see it finds the correct one. Uh, this is the family search page. There's the, actually a, a link, the Find My Past image as well. You can see there. So let's say build citation. Let's go back, and we already we have three. <laughs> we already have two different ones for ancestry, just because of the demo. But we'll in, insert the family search one and do a preview. Well, actually, just to make it clearer, let's delete this. This second ancestry one I created just for purposes of showing the table. Okay, so now we have the ancestry citation and the family search citation. You can see the family search citation because it was a find my past image. It's automatically added a link for that. And um, if you, you can see that the they're formatted similarly. They all have the, the meaningful title. They have the name of the census, which is a bit different for each site. They have the pretty much the same citation string. And finally, search gives a slightly different uh, summary text. I might improve that to be more like this one. If you wanted, you could combine these and just like copy these links into here. Some people like that. Some people think there should be a different one for each website. So that's the pretty much everything for this demo. Um, there are a lot more advanced features, but this is just a quick demo of Wikitree Sourcer. Um, there is a Wikitree Sourcer um, free space page, I'm going to leave here, uh, which gives you a bit more detail on how to install it from Chrome. I'll insert a link to this free space page below this if I post it on YouTube. And thanks for watching. That's all for now.